And next up we have Alex Glow, an amazing hackster who you might have met with her cybernetic parrot companion Archimedes, um, who uh, is going to give us our next talk. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Uh, I really should have uh, set up one of these to actually assist me with my talk. Uh, as you know, uh, so as Nadia mentioned, you might know me as the video personality from Hackster.io, which is an online community of hardware developers, people publishing open source tutorials, all kinds of good stuff, uh, which is very relevant to my talk. <laughs> Sorry about the sun in my face. But uh, this is my companion robot Archimedes. I've got Fenrir over here too, and they're going to help me talk about uh, sustainable practices for creating hardware. So. Uh, Let's just share my screen real quick. That's getting ahead of the game. Okay, so um, hardware tutorials. Yeah, um, for the last few years, I've been really uh, passionate about exploring sustainable ways of creating uh, electronics. And uh, an important thing to note here is that I am not an expert. I have lots of interests. Um, you can see that I'm into uh, companion bots, custom circuit boards, arcane tech tools, and biohacking, and also music. Uh, on Sundays, you might catch me doing a space song Sunday on Instagram Live. But I am not an expert. So my goal with this talk is to uh, start conversations and learn more about things uh, that I can add to this wiki, which is in the spirit of documentation, basically a way of aggregating all these tools and resources that I've come across uh, through my own research over the years, um, through groups like climateaction.tech, and also through conversations with people. So as part of my work, I interview people every Tuesday, and I've been making a focused effort to bring people to the forefront who are working specifically on this type of thing. And I'm going to put the link uh, out on my socials. I'm so used to saying link in the description <laughs> uh, uh, afterwards, and this will be available in lots of places. I'm going to put it everywhere. Uh, because what I want is for people to be able to use this to reference it in the future uh, and we won't just have to stare at like a dark screen the whole time um, and you'll be able to go back and I won't have to just read it off to you but yeah so the aim is to start more conversations gain more stuff to add to this wiki provide actionable steps to people who are at every stage of building the hardware so whether you're prototyping if you're a beginner who's learning if you're someone who's actually running a small electronics business, things like that. Uh, even if you're a larger electronics company, there's always stuff that you can do at every level. Uh, also further down here, uh, I want to provide inspiration for different projects that you can build. If you are uh, looking for stuff to build, you know, you want to build uh, electronics because that's your passion. Totally understandable. I'm there too. Uh, but also maybe you have misgivings about the idea. Sometimes I wake up and I'm like, shouldn't we should we maybe not be building technology <laughs> right now um and that's definitely one of the things uh to talk about but so that's part of this uh i want to promote visibility of some of these interviews and people who are doing cool work in uh sustainable technology and above all the goal is to empower people uh, with these resources to come back uh learn to provide uh you know to share your own work and uh, get visibility for that uh, at every step of the process. So one of the first things that um, I want to talk about here is, you know, the climate situation isn't necessarily our fault. Um, we are, let me uh, try to show my face. That's fine. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of information out there about how it's not individuals who are responsible for the climate situation. Uh, we don't, no one person is like, we don't have to solve it ourselves. I do not have to solve it. You do not have to solve it. And also uh, studies show that it is, you know, the top 1% of people are producing 50% of the emissions, especially through travel and things. And, you know, uh, I believe it is a hundred tech companies uh, or companies are producing 70% of the world's carbon emissions. You know, this is a problem that can also be solved through legislation. And there's, uh, you know, there's some resources here about around ways that you can um, do meaningful action and agitate for uh, legislative change that can help with this. There's also a UL white paper that's linked in here. And so even though it's not our individual responsibility necessarily. That's something that BP popularized, the idea of the carbon footprint as shifting blame onto the individual from 
you know, their own actions as a fossil fuel company, uh, even though it's not necessarily our our fault, it is our responsibility and it's our power. We as creators of technology have the power to change this, to shift the direction that things are going. We can build things, we can change the conversation and we can support people uh, who live in a world of technology, whether or not they know how to use it. And I think that's a really important piece of the puzzle. Uh, and we'll get into repairability and stuff like that. So uh, let's jump in again. Let me see if I can share. Yes, great, thanks. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so the first thing uh, I would like to start with is like, when you're when you're thinking about building something, ask yourself, like, why are you building the thing? Um, if you're building it to solve a need, maybe ask yourself if there's an existing project that does what you want or what you care about, rather than manufacturing something new. Uh, there's a really cool page from iFixit that says that, you know, the best phone, the most sustainable phone is the one that's already in your pocket. The best technology, uh, therefore, is the one that's already being manufactured that, uh, you know, we can always take open source projects and tune them and improve them and stuff. But uh, ask yourself, do I actually need to build a whole new thing? Um, is there a low tech solution? One of my favorite things, uh, I have this idea about rumble strips where they're just like the most elegant expression of problem solving in a low tech way. So if you want to keep drivers from running off the road, if they fall asleep or whatever, or if their attention drifts, you could build, you know, and this exists, there's all this technology for like, measuring people's sleepiness by how often they're blinking and like whether their like head is dipping down and things like that. But we have this technology, rumble strips, which is simply you stamp uh, indentations into the road at the edges and it creates this vibration when you drive over it. And that does so much of a better job and you don't have to charge it or anything. So I think that the best solutions um, you know, it may still involve technology, but also try and be elegant with it. Try and see like, what do you actually need to make smart? Where do you actually need to put IoT, like connect something to the internet? Uh, could you make it lower power and more resilient uh, and more private uh, by not connecting it to the internet? Things like that. So while we get, we have this techno joy, we want to get excited about technology, but uh, there's always interesting and elegant ways to make things that also uh, don't add extra load on the system. Are there things that you can repurpose? Uh, there's some really cool stuff around um, projects around repurpose repurposing old technology. Pardon me. Um, it's very early for me, uh, but I'm also very excited. So uh, there's a few projects that are in the wiki that take old technology and give them new life basically like zombies, but cooler um, with new technology in them. And then, yeah, so if you're looking to solve a need, those are the ideas that you can think about. And then if you're learning or looking for inspiration for things to build, then uh, we have some suggestions for what you can build. Um, but let's start at the top. So we talked about every stage of the process. So I want to focus on uh, people who are literally building and shipping hardware. There's a really cool blog post by Christina Sear who built the Circle Phone about uh, can a smartphone be sustainably manufactured? And she goes into um, all this in-depth research that she's done on materials and batteries and uh, recycling and things like that. Can you reuse individual components? Um, lithium batteries, power sources are a huge part of this. Um, I've got some resources for that. Uh, there's a really cool laptop coming out called the MNT Reform. And I think that Lucas is actually giving a talk later on, so you should jump on his talk and see what he's doing with this uh, modular repairable DIY laptop. Um, and they're using uh, types of batteries that don't use cobalt because that's a conflict mineral and it requires a lot of mining. Lithium also has issues, but you can recycle it better. Um, yeah, so think about enclosures and what they're made of. So um, much is made of the fact that PLA or polylactic acid is compostable, but uh, it's not actually compostable outside of um, uh, industrial facilities. So you need like a six by six foot cube of it uh, and lots of high temperatures and stuff in order to make it actually compost. So there's some other options. Um, and then also the PLA is a thermoplastic and you can... Uh, reuse it by reheating it up and reforming it. Uh, and I've done a bunch of experiments on that personally, uh, including trying to cram it down a glue stick, a uh, glue gun. 
which worked okay. <laughs> I've actually documented those those um uh experiments in a whole other wiki that I'll link here. Um ah no. Here we go. Plastic experiments. So uh, extruding it through a hot glue gun, sticking it in various molds and things like that. Um, so uh, other materials that you can use that are more sustainable. Jiva materials is a really cool new technology that's coming out. They have a fully recyclable and biodegradable PCB substrate, which is very exciting. Look at that. It's made of wood and they call it soluboard. Um, sustainable materials for design, this awesome company, Lumia Soft Circuit Systems, who make beautiful soft circuits um, with stickers and heating pads and touch sensors and things like that. And they have a whole page on uh, sustainable uh, materials that they use, including a thing called ECOA, which I believe is an alternative kind of wood. Um, fabrication with recycled plastic, cardboard, and more. I did an interview with Agustin Arroyo, who talks about, uh, he has a project called Pulp It that is um, 3D printed molds that you can use to recycle cardboard into different shapes. And he has an example where you uh, turn it into desk uh, implements, like a, a cup holder and even a, a little tray. And uh, that's one way that he does it, but he also talks about uh, creating your own plastic for 3D printing or for uh, vacuum forming that uh, is based on yeah recycling stuff yourself at home. Now, a lot of these are, you know, that one specifically is about uh, things that you can do on a more personal level. There's a lot of things in here for people who are running their own businesses as well. Uh, Precious Plastic has a really great set of guides. Uh, you can even go into business uh, working with your own plastic recycling machines that they will supply. Um, community workspaces are a huge part of this as well. Uh, and then there's uh, 3D printing filament. So there's a cool article from all 3DP that compares various recycled filaments. We talked about PLA a minute ago. Um, I actually happen to have a new spool of filament from Closed Loop Plastics, which is this beautiful deep purple uh, sort of dusty plum color. And this is uh, made of recycled plastic cups. And that's also in the wiki here. Uh, yeah, so you can recycle your own PLA. You can buy recycled filament. Resin printing, I think, is a lot harder to do in a sustainable way, but you do get nice results. Uh, a big part of the idea here is not to be perfect. Nobody has to be perfect. And we're not going to all solve it on ourselves, but anything that you can change, anything that you can do is going to help. I'd like to bring out my assistant Fenrir to talk about using cardboard to prototype. So, oh, actually both of you guys come up here. So uh, maybe we can show these guys a little bit uh, larger. I'm not in charge of the, uh, the viewpoint, but yeah. So, Archimedes here actually uh, is one that I designed with his little beak using uh, and his wings using recycled CDs. So there's a cool process that you can do where you take old CDs and boil them to delaminate the layers. And then you can cut them apart with scissors without them cracking. And I've used those as accents on my little companion bot Archimedes that was mentioned before. And uh, oh, also uh, this version of Archie I tried um, mending him using HDPE from milk uh, gallon jugs. So they're made of this high density polyethylene that uh, you can melt down. It melts a bit higher than PLA. Uh, it can be a little challenging to recycle, but you can also just cut it apart. So the left side of his beak here is actually falling off. That's a successful experiment with a null result, <laughs> which is that uh, tr maybe don't try hot gluing HDPE to stuff, but uh, yeah, you can. It's repair in action, it's sustainable materials in action. And then Fenrir here uh, was prototyped around a cardboard chassis. And if you look at him, you can still see bits of that and the goldfish container that he was made of with that orange, beautiful orange aesthetic inside and the nutrition facts. Oh, look at that. How much iron? 4% iron in a goldfish apparently. Uh, but yeah, 
you can use these as the bases of your product projects while you're prototyping. Not everything has to be a gorgeous version. You can uh, make your first one out of cardboard, lasers up really fast, and it smells nice too, which is a bonus. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's talk about the Jewel Thief real quick because I'm afraid I might run out of time. Oh my gosh. It's already 7.59. Ah, okay. Well, I have accidentally almost gone over time. I could talk about this forever. Uh, check out the wiki. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can have more time. Yay. <sighs> I'm going to scroll through this really fast. No, I'm going to do a live demo. I want to show you these things I've been making. So uh, personally, one of the other things that I love to do with my projects is to make them versatile, which for me means making them so that not only does it work as a piece of hardware, but it works as a piece of aesthetic uh, art as well. So. Every time that I make something, um, usually I try to make them wearable. So this is an ESP8266 programmer. And whether or not these worked on the first try, which fortunately they did, but even if they didn't, I would still be able to wear them as like a cool technological earring. And um, <laughs> yeah, so that way, like even if you have extras, even if they go obsolete, even if they don't work, you still get to have a cool piece of technology that you're able to wear. And I wanted to show you this really cool circuit, the Jewel Thief, that I actually designed specifically for this talk because uh, I'm very excited about it. Uh, it is a little circuit that you can use to run low power devices off of dead batteries. So this one uh, is designed to work with this maker tape, conductive tape. And this is a white LED that's extremely bright and blinds me every time I do this. Um, yeah, and uh, the circuit is just, beautiful because it's made with these ferrite toroids that you can salvage out of existing pieces of technology. You can grab pretty much any types of, of NPN transistor, uh, grab resistors out of wherever and stick it all together and design your own enclosures to make it into whatever kind of uh, device you want. And you can also uh, run this different types of things off of this. Anyway, so to wrap up, check out the wiki. Uh, very exciting. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you Open Hardware Summit. And I'll put the links in my Twitter, which is at Glowisky. That's awesome. We're running slightly behind, but maybe so if sorry. you're available yeah. out, no, it's not your fault at all. We're just like, we've really packed it in here. Um, but maybe there's some questions for you on Discord. So if you have a second yes. to check those out, um, it would I'm be I'm going to put the link in the Discord and I'll totally jump in there. I'd love this to be an ongoing conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alex.